Doug Stanhope, and that's why I drink. The troops, though, troops are different. You gotta support the troops, right? Yeah. Wrong again. <laughs> You keep trying, but yeah, I, I'm not saying don't support the troops. I'm saying I, I support people on an individual basis. I gotta meet the troop first. If I meet the troop, he's a cool troop, we drink, and he doesn't turn into a dildo. Yeah, I'll support him. I'll support him no matter what he's, he does. I'll write his specific name on the yellow ribbon so they know it's just the PFC James Campbell or whatever his fucking name is, and then he can do whatever he wants. He could go AWOL or drop bombs on his own guys and Canadians or whatever, and I'll go, hey, he's having a bad day. I know that guy. I drank with him. He's cool. Right? But some troops are... Dickhead. Some troops are, you know them. They're some of fucking assholes. I was down in Colleen, Texas, by Fort Hood. There was a troop down there in a bar, and he wanted to hammer my head flat because I accidentally dumped over his piss warm draft beer. I, and he was fucking, you know how they get the fucking forearm swinging forward? The fucking monkey redneck fucking, oh, you want to kick my ass? I didn't support that troop during the war. I did not. That troop was a. Shithead, and I hoped he died first. That's the only reason I watched that boring. Yeah, yeah, no, I wanted to see his little peanut head explode on CNN on a choppy, sad like feed, because he's a fucking asshole. He's not fighting for your freedom, he's fighting because he's a psychopath that wants to kill somebody. He found a good outlet, and that's good, right? That's why I'm pro war, as long as it's voluntary. This war was voluntary. I mean, there's no draft. They weren't yanking kids out of the inner city and making them go fight a war. Everyone who joined the military joined the mil military because they kind of want to go kill other people, right? <laughs> and that's good. That's your instinct. Your instinct is your true God. Follow it. If you just want to fucking kill someone, there's a place for it. <laughs> the, go to the military. As long as people who kind of want to go kill other people are going to kill other people who kind of want to go kill other people, you're killing all the right people and opening up all the best parking spaces because people who want to kill other people are the last people I want to party with because I get mouthy when I drink. So go, you know, yeah, have a big killing free-for-all. Make up wars. Fight over Antarctica. Call it Manifest Destiny and do it on, you know, do 12-man teams from different countries on paintball fields with real weapons and put it on pay-per-view. Your priest will tell you, your priest will tell you that abortion is wrong because your priest will tell you that life begins at conception. But a priest will also tell you it's okay to suck his dick when you're only 12. So maybe his timing's just off. Here's what everyone seems to overlook with the whole priest molestation scandal, if you think about it. With all the horrible, horrible shit that your priest is pumping into your kid's head, his dick should be the least of your worries, honestly. That's just a little bit of mouthwash and a few years of therapy will get rid of that. That Jesus shit will torture you for a lifetime. <laughs> We sent our boy to church so he could learn a lifetime of guilt, shame, self-hatred, all the things we enjoy. And then the priest flopped out his how do you do right in front of the child. Who's the abuser? How come he never told us this was happening to him? Because you're a freak and a prude and you can't... Anytime that kid came to you with anything of a sexual nature, you probably freaked out and cramped up and prude it up and sent him to church to deal with it where he got fucked in the face again. There's an old vicious circle. Mommy, is it normal for an older man to have sex with a young boy my age right in his mouth? Where do you get these ideas, Kevin? Who's telling you these things? It's horrible. Sex is not like, sex is something that you, well, sex is for people that, why don't you go talk to Father Hanrahan about this right now? No! <laughs> but mommy, I was trying to tell you that he's the one who's gonna... <laughs> Not only do we not have liberty, who has less liberty than the children you make say this. That's the irony. They get the least liberty of anyway. We don't have it. They got dick. They can't do shit. We have the oldest children in the world in this country. We don't let them do shit forever. You can't do shit. They can't 
drink, they can't smoke, they can't drive, they can't vote, they can't work, they can't fuck for God's sakes. And you wonder why your teenager is such an asshole. You wonder why he's sitting in a Taco Bell parking lot after the Friday night high school football game. He's keying cars and he's smearing dog shit on your door handles for no particular reason. It's because he's bored out of his tit. You won't do, let him do anything else. You watch on the news, you see a 10-year-old kid in a third world country. He's got an AK-47 and a death stare looking right into the camera. That kid's not out spray painting overpasses on Saturday night. He's got shit to do. He's got a whole agenda. You learn by fucking up, and it takes you until you fucked up a bunch of times to learn. There's no magic number. You want to fix the Pledge of Allegiance, put a disclaimer at the end. <laughs> With liberty and justice for all. Must be 18, void where prohibited. Some restrictions may apply. Not available in all states. If you're gonna pledge blind allegiance and call yourself American for a government that fucks you on a regular basis, <laughs> democracy is the worst kind. I'm sorry, but it is. We get to pick our leaders. Well, what if I don't want a leader? Where does that vote go? I do good on my own. I don't want to be led. Is that, is that freedom? American Idol was the number one show on television for the last two years. Those are the people picking your leaders with less insight than they put into whether fucking Ruben Stoddard should win an award. Or, uh, it's dumb. You gotta, would you call yourself a Christian if they had a new Jesus every four years? You want to make a difference in the world, here's some things you can do. First. You work for a major corporation, fuck stuff up, break stuff. It's good for the economy. It drives their prices up. It makes the small businessman competitive again. I, again, I'm bad with math, but I think that one will work. <laughs> trade out when you can. Don't buy things if you don't have to buy things. If you can trade out, if you're a, a, a pool cleaner and you're a carpet layer, don't buy each other's products, trade out. And that's how you fuck the tax man. They have so much of your money, they piss right in your face and they, they waste it and they go, ha, ah, look at how much of your money we're wasted. Take it, you pitch. Fucking take my piss. They spent $30 million advertising the new $20 bill. $30 million to, to put TV ads. This is the new $20 bill. Who's the competition? What do you need to advertise? Ah, well, we had to spare $30 million because we're pissing in his face. Ah, give me $30 million while I'm fucking pissing your face. What do you think? I'm going to start spending Costa Rican colones if you don't give me... Uh, I don't like the new... Uh, 20, it's, a, it's more of an autumn color, I'm a spring. <laughs> Take jury duty. This is how you beat him. Everyone tries to get out of jury duty like it's a big pain in the ass, but it's honestly the easiest way you can make a difference as a single human being. If you take jury duty and it's any kind of bullshit crime, any kind of you know, drug possession, any prostitution, any victimless crime, anything that's none of your goddamn business, and it, you just say not guilty. If it's any kind of IRS bullshit, any .09 DUI, come on. You say not guilty. If it's any kind of class action lawsuit where some douchebag, her kid died in some weird fashion and she deserves compensation because there was no warning on the box that if her kid swallowed a Lincoln log sideways that he could have a bad day. So she wants $8.5 million because nothing spells relief of loss of a loved one like $8.5 million. It's just the principle of the thing. Yeah. Soup for a buck. This is about my baby. It's mother Lincoln Lawrence is terrible. Not guilty. Is what I'm saying? No matter how guilty they obviously are. In fact, the more guilty they obviously are, the funnier it is when you say not guilty. <laughs> The guy can be guilty as shit and sweating, big shaky crackhead and making up lies, yanking rabbits out of his ass for the judge. No, Your Honor, I, I was down in Columbia. I was in Columbia because I had to take a landscaping job for a weekend through a temp agency. I was a Kelly girl mowing lawns, but down in Bogota, you gotta work naked for some reason. It's a weird custom that they have, but I didn't want to complain. I needed the gig, man. My rent was due. 
So I was bending over to pull start that lawnmower, and all of a sudden, a small, dart-headed frog that's indigenous to the area, it sprung out of the shrubbery, and it went fa-foom right into my rectum. I, and then I went delirious from the toxins in its skin. I blacked out, and the next thing I know, I'm walking through customs with a condom full of coke in my colon. <laughs> And you say, same thing happened to me, not guilty. And then you go do bumps with the guy. You can make a difference. You just have to find the grip. You don't live in a free country. You got the flag on your shirt there. Oh, it's upside down. You're fucking sweet. <laughs> it's not a free country. You're born free. I mean, you're born absolutely free, except for laws of nature. Those, if you drink, you get drunk. That's a law. If you, if you get old, you die. That's a law, too. If you sit on a tack, you will bleed from the ass. These are the only laws that you're born with, and any government just fucks you out of that type of freedom. If you, if you really think you're free tonight, you, hero, Officer Bomb, you're a free man. You live in a free country, but you're just, you go upstairs, you take your own beer you risk your life for. You sit on the hood of your monster truck in the parking lot, drink your beer, and see how long it is before actual veteran cops come by and pound on you with truncheons on the kidneys to show, why, why can't I do it? I'm just having a beer. What? Well, uh, I don't know. That's the law, though. You don't fuck around. You can't drive down the street without a seatbelt on. Why not? I don't know. You're going to put on a helmet. You can't sit in your own backyard naked, your own filthy, dirty flesh that you're born with. You know that body you carry around? Filthy. You can't sit out. Why not? I don't know. That's just the way it is. Mother! You're not free. You're not free in the least. You need a diploma in this country to cut hair. You're free. You need to keep your tray in an upright and locked position during takeoff. It's not just a hack premise. It's a fucking felony. And uh, Cunty the Hero Sky Club will fucking throw you off the plane as a terrorist for going, why do I have to have this? This doesn't make sense. They say if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach a man to fish... Then he's got to get a fishing license, but he doesn't have any money. So he's got to get a job, and he has to get into the social security system and pay taxes. And now you're going to audit the poor cocksucker, because he's not really good with math. You pull the IRS van up to your house, he'll take all your shit. He'll take your black velvet Elvis, and your Batman toothbrush, and your penis pump, and that all goes up for auction with the burden of proof on you, because you forgot to carry the one, because you were just worried about eating a fucking fish and you couldn't even cook the fish because you needed a permit for an open flame and then the health department is going to start asking you a lot of questions about where are you going to dump the scales and the guts. This is not a sanitary environment and ladies and gentlemen if you get it, if you get sick of it all at the end of the day not even legal to kill yourself in this country. Thanks again John Ashcroft you weird bible addict can't even handle his own drug. You were born free, you got fucked out of half of it, and you wave a flag celebrating. <laughs> but there is an afterlife, and I, if I can give you any hope in this show, I have definitive proof of an afterlife. I didn't get weird or go religious on you. I'm not saying there's a God. I don't know what the afterlife entails. But here's the proof. My mother killed herself in 2008. Don't worry, this is a fun story. It was the best death you could ever be part of. She was dying of emphysema at 63. Her, her brain was still with it, but her, she was drowning in her own fluids. She's uh, being permanently waterboarded by 45 years of cool milds. She can't take it anymore. We knew it was going to happen when she made the call. I, I can't do it. I'm like, all right, Ma, uh, we'll do what we can. I like... All right, Ma's going to kill herself. I, I don't know what to do. Like, that's, okay, we know it's going to happen, but what, when you say we're going to do it, I'm not going to go buy you a fucking shotgun. <laughs> like, oh, have fun, Ma. <laughs> so I don't, I, I don't know what to do. I don't kill people. Like, I, it's just, it's not something, like, I fantasize about it. If my mother were Nancy Grace, I'd have been all over it. Like, I have plans, but my mother was a great person. So I'm like, how do we do this right? 
So I called my lawyer. I have three lawyers. We have, like, we're Jewed up big with lawyers in LA for this shit, all the camera people and recording contracts. Then I have my local Bisbee attorney that helps me with, like, I got married when I was 20 and I had 24 years of marital bliss till I remembered, oh fuck, I never divorced that girl I drunkenly married in Vegas. That's for another DVD. So he. But then we have our third lawyer, who's a comedy fan. He's our, like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad attorney. That he handles all the creepy shit. Like when me and Andy are up late at night doing blow and thinking of cre Call Kirshner, see how much jail time we could. Could we go to prison if we actually did this? He's that guy. So I called him knowing he'd hook me up with a, a doctor on the down low, as we say in the black community, as a black person. He gave me the number to a, a doctor, and a, I go, hey, my mother's gonna cash out, and I don't know what to do. He said, what do you have? I go, I got Xanax out the ass. On the border, you can get all the fucking Xanax you want. Uh, he's like, that's no good, that's anti-anxiety. Does she have hospice care? Yeah, she does. Then she should have morphine. Ma, you got morphine? Yeah, I got morphine. All right, she's got morphine. We worked out the dosages and the milligrams, and he goes, if she has 30 of those, that's enough to kill any human being on the planet. She had fucking 90. I'm like, okay, we're good. Okay, we never talked, remember that. Okay, doc. So I'm like, all right, we're gonna do this. First of all, bring her to my house, because she lived in 300 square feet of hoarder paradise, old electric bills with spider webs all cramped. Like, it's depressing enough if you're gonna help your mother kill herself, but we're gonna go to my house, we'll tidy up. We'll... So we set her up with a uh, hospital bed in the living room. She had been uh, AA off and on for my whole life. She had, at this point, been four years sober, and I'm like, you're not gonna kill yourself sober, right? You can't take those chips with you. Right? She's like, yeah, you're right, why would I do that? That's dumb. So she, in her heyday, she was a black Russian drinker, so I set out a mini bottle of Kettle One and a mini bottle of Kahlua with her pills for whenever you're ready, let me know. We laid down ground rules. Uh, I said, Ma, if you're gonna kill yourself seriously, uh, you can't do it on Sunday or Monday, because that's football. And that's, that's a dick move. If you can call your own time to leave this planet, don't do it during someone else's planned event. Don't be an asshole. And she did it the Saturday before football. That was great. She came in on Thursday, Saturday night. She goes, it's time. And I'm like, time for what? Like, medication? No, it's time. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this is real. So I wake up, bingo, like it's going on. We start mixing up white Russians. She decided to make black Russians white Russians because she thought the milk would coat her belly better for taking all the pills. Like mother till the end. Do you have whole milk? I got skim, skim will work. I just don't want to throw up the pills. Chicken soup for the suicide. <laughs> you're so fucking, you're so sweet. So, so we're, whipping up drinks and I don't I didn't so much assist the suicide as bar back it like I'm in there mixing drinks because we're all drinking we watched Bad Santa together our favorite movie together he had a very dark sense of humor my I didn't come from nowhere my mother used to review porn on the man show she's fucking dark like us so we watched Bad Santa and she's trying to choke down these pills she had a very hard time taking pills so she's just you know, gagging and just getting them down. So I'm keeping a vague count. When she got around 30, little over, I'm like, Ma, that's good. You don't need to do any more. You're fine. And she said, I don't want to take any chances. She's so scared of fucking up. She took all 90. <laughs> no, we're sitting there in horror going, you're wasting. Ma, they said 30 of those would kill any human being alive. You could leave 60 of them for me and Bingo as our only inheritance other than the last 17-year-old blind cat you have, Georgia. Yeah, you could have 60 morphines to have spontaneous memorials for mother every here and again. Remember mom, Papa Morphine, woo! What a great lady, what a crazy old bitch. No, hoarder till the end, all fucking 90. And then we fucked with her. 
heart. I remember her last words as she's coming in and out, because we're just goofing on her as she's doing this, as she's fading in and out. I didn't even know if she'd respond. She was just hammering cocktails. She, and, and she's laying there half in, half out with a white Russian on her chest that she'd occasionally get to her mouth and it'd spill. You know when you come off the wagon, you hit it fucking hard. And it's pretty bad when you're trying to keep up drinking with an 83-pound, 63-year-old woman. And I go, wow, you're really knocking those back, Ma. And she goes, there's times to be dainty and there's times to be a pig. <laughs> and we all laugh. And this is a mother's problem throughout her life. She was a funny lady sporadically, but when she would get a laugh, she would just hammer it and over tag it and repeat the joke. Like, just keep, I, I could keep getting a laugh off the same joke and it would ruin the joke. And when we all laughed that there's times to be a pig, I saw her go into, she's gonna, and I go, shut your fucking mouth. Those are perfect last words. You're not gonna ruin this joke. Cut the mic on mother. And then we just roasted her as she fell in and out. We just did a Friars Club roast making fun of her and making it a fun, dark suicide. Ma, wait, they found a cure. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I was a bad mother. I love you. At one point, I remember uh, I said, uh, Ma, if there's, a, if there's any kind of white light situation, that other side that you get to, if you can communicate with us Houdini style, see if there's any way that you can make the Saints cover eight points at Oakland tomorrow. Because I have money on the game. And they did. The Saints fucking blew them out. October 12, 2008. The Saints won 34 to 3. I'm not saying that's proof of an afterlife. That was just 40 bucks that I won. <laughs> proof of the afterlife is this. If there were no afterlife, how could my mother have bought me and my friends so many nice things from the Sky Mall catalog <laughs> on her credit card? Four days after she passed from this earth. Answer me that, Your Honor. Answer me that. In fact, I'd like to enter these credit card receipts into evidence against the advice of my attorney. Look at that. Four days. I had to swear on your Bible just to testify in my own defense. Your silly fake Jesus only lasted three days before he ran out of that cave like a pussy. My mother, four days, relaxing up there. She's drunk eBaying like I do. That last piece of that story has special meaning to me because in my entire career, that's the only chunk of material I've ever had that had a statute of limitations before I could comfortably tell it on stage. Three years statute for credit card fraud. After that, fuck you. Mother didn't want some silly gravestone. That doesn't do anything. Mother wanted me to have a voice-activated remote control R2-D2 doll. <laughs> I'm just saying we all occupy in our own way. You occupy your fucking filthy Portland hippie selves because you hate the 1% and you hate the banks because of their predatory lending practices against the people and enslave them in a lifetime of debt. What'd you do about it? You stunk up a park for almost a year. I occupy far more efficiently. Maybe you should look to me for leadership. I hate the banks as well as we all do. How did I fuck them? I spent three hours jacking up mother's Chase Bank Visa card after she's dead up to its $10,000 limit, buying dumb shit that no one needs and sticking them with the bill because she had no estate except for that blind fucking last cat. If you want to repo that, have at it. That actually caused damage to the bank. 
not sitting around with a dog with a kerchief and a cardboard sign, <laughs> slapping on drums in a drum circle. The fucking Occupy movement was such a letdown because you seemed like me, angry, and we're going to take to the streets, and holy shit, around the globe, people are, fuck this, we're going to do something. And what did you do? You fucked up a park. All you fucked up in a year is some guy's day who wanted to throw a frisbee for his dog, but you, he couldn't because you're all camped out there. You hate the banks? Don't fuck up the park. Fuck up the bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's in charge of this project? Next time, me. We don't really have leadership. You needed some. You have 500 angry people in a park. Go break them up into squads of 20. You can fuck up every branch of Bank of America in a 50-mile radius. Go there. And not as anarchists either, throwing bricks through the windows. What are you, a fucking teenager? Have some ingenuity. You line up as customers at 8 o'clock in the morning. They only have two desks to do actual commerce other than cashing checks and shit. You clog up those two desks as bogus customers. Sit down, cross your legs, apply for frivolous loans all day long. That's a lot of paperwork for every frivolous. Yes, I need a billion dollars for an ant farm. Sharpen some pencils, that's a big stack of paperwork. I'd love some coffee. You comb your dreadlocks over to one side, put on your $3 Salvation Army suit, and you clog up all their time. Or you could deny me the right to apply for the loan, and then I sue the fuck out of you for discrimination, causing even more damage to your bottom line. Rather than just sitting out there in a park getting tear gassed by cops, what does that do? What are you accomplishing? I got it on tape. Police abuse. Yeah, police abuse people. That's how it works. You're never going to win. Yeah, well, you're going to fight that, and eventually they'll go, it was justified. I was laying there. I'm paralyzed. I was face down in the park. They tased me. Justified. Yeah. Why aren't you the cops? That's a better idea. You had a fucking year in a park. The first week of Occupy, you should have called everyone with no police record out, made them go applied to be police, you'd have had people that have gotten through the academy, they're in the works now, they're moles on your side, they're sitting in there in a riot helmet with a Bluetooth underneath the Star Wars helmet, calling you in the park, giving you heads ups. Hey Kevin, you might want to put on a gas mask around 7.45 a.m., you know what I'm saying? Thanks, Shane, but we're already wearing gas masks because we haven't showered in seven and a half months and Angela's snatch is really starting to reek up the pup and something ferocious. But keep fighting the good fight, power to the people. Good Christ, you could have done so much with that. There's a fucking million ways you could have been clever. I, 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 I love, that's why I love like WikiLeaks and anonymous, because they're actually in there. They're fucking with the system. They're not sitting around chanting, slapping bongos. Bradley Manning didn't get to release all that information by sitting in a drum circle. He had to get inside. That's why you should fucking read up on Scientology, and I'm serious. Scientology is brilliant. If you read this book, Inside Scientology, it's a breakdown of how that evil motherfucker created that religion in a modern time. Every other religion people believe in, you only believe in it because all your ancestry did. This guy had to create this and sell it to adults recently. <laughs> it's as stupid as any other religion, but how did he do it? How did he create this Leviathan? Read this book, Inside Scientology, and apply those evil tactics to Occupy, and you have a fucking winning recipe. You follow L. Ron Hubbard's intimidation, infiltration, harassment, blackmail, complete abuse of the legal system, where you just turn a crossed eye stink look at Scientology and they'll sue you into poverty. You use that for good. You know what L. Ron Hubbard didn't have in his master plan for world domination? 
drum circle. It doesn't do anything. You sit in that bad. No one wants to hear that. It's annoying as shit. You had enough time in a year to learn how to play real instruments. You could have had a whole New Orleans style jazz swing band that people want to hear. Boom, 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 boom. But instead, what? I'm not against you. I, I, I appreciate the passion. I don't know how anyone who has a cause in life where they put that much time and effort into trying to change something. How do you pick one thing? How do you, how do you wake up in the morning and look at the billions of things that suck on this planet? You log into your Yahoo News and it's just countries you didn't even know were countries have problems you didn't even know existed. How do you pick one sliver of that and decide that's the one we have to print up t-shirts and have a car wash? I would be so confused. I want to make change. I, how do you pick something? If if it hasn't affected you. Oh, juvenile diabetes? Well, I don't know, but I have lots of free time during the day. I guess I should do. Oh, wait, spina bifida. And the guy's right here, and he's uncomfortable to look at. So maybe I'll go with this guy's cause and clitoral circumcision in the third world. And that, I know that gives me a handy excuse for not finding it, but that's selfish. And I have to stop thinking about me. Maybe we should, and as soon as you focus on one thing, here comes Sarah McLaughlin on the TV with the skinny, sad puppies and the abused, in the arms of an angel. I don't know why animals always seem to trump any human cause, but they do, and now you're telling me about fucking corrective rape, which is some weird thing in South Africa, you know? Corrective rape is where they gang rape lesbians to try to cure them, and I wanna, I'm behind, that just to bring attention to it because the term corrective rape is such a good comedy reference <laughs> that I demand a bigger laugh when I mention corrective rape but no one knows about it so I want to bring attention to your cause I just don't know how you pick if I had any cause over the course of my career that I bitched the most about it's overpopulation which is the root of most of the other problems you care about anti-children but I don't know where to send a check. I don't know, like, what do you do? The only solution that I've ever come up with, which I, I think is great, but no one's gotten on board, uh, incentive-based eugenics. Eugenics was a practice of uh, sterilizing people. Hitler got a lot of the credit for it, but it was actually done in this country long before Hitler, even though knew who he was mad at. He was, we were practicing eugenics in this country. Eugenics was the uh, practice of forced sterilization of undesirables, which sounds bad. Uh, and the way they did it was bad, because uh, they, they would, uh, first of all, the force is wrong. You don't force people to do things they don't want to do. And B, who decides who's undesirable? They were doing it in this country at the turn of the 20th century, which is the 1900s for a lot of my fans, uh, early 1900s, to uh, criminals, perverts, which is way too vague, uh, the mentally ill, mentally retarded, uh, homosexuals, which makes perfect sense. We don't want them breeding. Our little queers running all up and down like gremlins. But if you took away the force and you just made it incentive-based for people willing to sterilize themselves, offer up some white trash prizes. You know, NASCAR pit pass, meet your favorite driver. All you're gonna do is snip the sack. Really? Your supply of sunny delight. You want some sunny D, don't you? All you're gonna do is putty up that front hole, lady. You still have two holes left to trick guys out of drinks at the bar. What do we gotta do? Are you telling me if I cut off my balls, I'm going crossbow hunting with Ted Nugent? Well, shit, yeah. No, no, sir, 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 wait, no, you don't actually cut off your balls. We just make a small incision with a local anesthetic. Fuck you, I want you to cut off my whole balls. I'm gonna hang them from my rear view mirror like a lucky rabbit's foot. 
I'm going crossbow hunting with the nudes. I ain't never won nothing in my life. That's a workable plan. There's no, you can't argue with that. It just won't happen. Here's what I think. If you're behind, whatever you're behind, we should triage all charity. So we take the most important and most easily solved first. Everyone works on that and we'll get to yours eventually. I would start with a starving people in a world full of food. That seems easy to solve. You don't need scientists with lab reports and years. No, there's lots of shit, loads of food. There's just, just a transit problem. Someone from FedEx, get the food there. How, what, we live in a place of fucking horse meat is a scandal. They found horse meat. The, how dare, oh my God, have you heard? There was horse meat in my frozen processed lasagna meal. How dare they put a more lean and nutritional meat and now we're gonna dump it by the warehouse fulls in the garbage dumps while people are starving to death on this planet. That makes no sense. I can solve that. Yeah, take that food and feed the people that don't have it. And then we get down to the next most important and the wrongly accused and the torture and the thing and the disease and Occupy is lower and then save the manatees even lower than that. And eventually, hopefully in a perfect world, we get down to the bottom, which is toys for tots. How fucking embarrassing is it to live in a country where Toys for Tots is an actual recognized legitimate charity? God forbid little Daniel go through some bogus holiday made on for some fake deity without Lincoln Logs. The horror. The horror. That's why they have to have Marines and bikers enforce that shit like henchmen because otherwise you just go fuck you toys they're starving people and then some big fucking crew cut guy i fucking fought for your freedom give me a goddamn lego for the kid it's gonna be tough Whatever your cause, your charity, or your drive, your effort, audit it. Make sure, because so much of it is symbolism over substance, where people think they're helping by doing nothing. Audit all the time and effort and see if you're actually affecting change, rather than just, oh, we're going to have a 10K fund run for the cure come on down on sunday it's a 10k fun run for the cure why why when has running ever cured anything i don't understand the cause and effect on this is, is that how jonas salt cured polio is by speed walking around the track down at saint mary's high school with a wife beater on and a paper number safety pin to his back Oh, we're doing it for the cure. How are you curing anything? Well, what I do is I get sponsors. And every time I go around the track another time, my sponsor gives me another quarter for the cure. So I got to go as many times as I... Are your friends that sick and sadomasochistic that they wouldn't just cut you a check outright for the cure? They make you do weird shit first? Larry, you know, my daughter was born with cerebral palsy and we're trying to get a big fundraiser going. Really? Yeah. How many hard-boiled eggs will you eat? Come on. Come on. You love your kid, right? Come on. No, they would cut you a check outright, but you're that much of a fucking megalomaniac that you have to make the cure about you. You need spotlight in this. You could just get a check, but no one's going to fucking... Be 
Oh, no, you know, the truth is I do this same speed walk at St. Mary's every morning at 6.30 before work with my Labrador, Sheba, trying to shed a few pounds, you know, but no one claps for me then and calls me heroic, so I'm going to do it on Sunday afternoon for the cure, and everyone's going to go, go, Ray, go! Yeah, you could do it, but you want to fucking... It's a 10K fun run about you, you fucking megalomaniac. Stop it. You know you're not doing shit. You can just get the check from your friend and then actually do something that means something other than running. We're, we're getting donations and we're petitioning City Hall for a spot in the park to big, make a big granite slab for the victims and the sufferers and the survivors of the thing. And then we're going to painstakingly etch each name of the people into the stone at great expense for what? It's a fucking chunk of rock. It doesn't help. Put that time and effort and money into actually something that's calculated that actually helps. We're gonna knit a SARS quilt. It's gonna take all summer long. Because there's people with SARS and they're chilly with SARS and they need a quilt. What? We're gonna have a, a prayer circle. We're gonna have a candlelight vigil at midnight. Could you do less? Mathematically, ask your accountant if there's any way you could do any less than that. Well, we are raising awareness. Raising awareness is another form of doing nothing. Only now, you're making me aware that the nothing that I've been doing is not up to par with the nothing that you're doing for such a noble cause. Why don't you do my nothing for your car? We'll watch Storage Wars for the Cure, and then we'll both be happy in our impotence, and we'll find out what's in that safe. Are you aware of breast cancer? Fucking the entire month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The entire country turns pink, so you can't not be aware of all your products. You go to the grocery store. You, usually I buy the Progresso soup, but this month I'm gonna get the one with the pink ribbon so I know that I've done all I can to help my fellow man. I don't read the fine print that says 0. .000001 cents of every can up to a very minimal amount goes to Oh, it actually goes nowhere near a titty ever at all. It goes to more promotional material asking for more money and to give very dubious medical advice where a lot of titties get chopped off that didn't need to because we're an industry, not a charity anymore. I don't read that part. I just see the pink ribbon and know that I'm helping. You've destroyed the color pink. There's no need for that. The color, I like the color pink. And you've ruined it. You see pink, that's all you can think about. I have a pink bedroom. My bedroom is pink. I can't sleep in it during October because you just see the color and all you think about is giant metastasizing titties sucking the life out of some poor woman. Why you fuck up a color? Associate it with something else that's negative. You know, traffic and weather brought to you at the top of the hour on fucking 6.20 a.m. Hey, traffic sucks again. This was brought to you by breast cancer. Now Next time you're stuck in traffic, you go, oh, wow, fuck, this sucks, but not as bad as cancer. Maybe I should try to help. <laughs> Don't fuck up a color. Do you watch football? This is where it went too far with me. The National Football League participates in Breast Cancer Awareness Month. First of all, why is it Breast Cancer Awareness Month rather than Cancer Awareness Month? I, I assume if you cure breast cancer, that would cure ass cancer and face cancer and shit cancer it's cancer because kitties sell tickets stupid okay i forget the marketing angle maybe you're right on that still the national football league participates with the pink gloves and just pink on the players where if you think football is stupid you're right whatever you do football is my stupid that's what i do for a few hours on a weekend in the fall to forget how much I hate myself. I don't want to think about breast cancer while I'm watching football to get away from this. It's hard enough to watch football as it is if you're a fan without constantly thinking about AIDS. You have to push that out of your head. Inherently, if you're a fan of the game, 
with the, with the technology that they have now. You watch Monday Night Football or Super Bowl, they have cameras now that come down on cables right over the field, like right over the players' heads, almost touching them. You have 60 inches of high definition. You have a camera panning around 11 men bent up in a huddle, presenting these beautiful, thick man asses and it's zooming in on each one. And it creates this Bangkok whorehouse scenario in your brain. You feel a little tuggle in your sweatpants. You're like, oh, what if they were behind glass in Phuket? Which one would I select from my evening's entertainment from the Cambodian guy that runs the place? And he's got an eye patch. And I go, Jing Dai, Go Da! And he pulls the guy out. Number 28. I haven't even seen all the guys. And I impulse buy on 28. He's a, he's a halfback with these sinewy horse haunches leaning into me. And in my mind, before I can make a rational decision, I've already leaped over the railing at the field. I'm streaking butt naked across the field wearing nothing but a, I'm wearing an 1800s nightcap that's uh, striped with a pom-pom. I don't know why that, but I'm wearing flip-flops because they make you run funnier when my dick is slapping up and down against my belly. You make your dick however big you want it to be. It's your fantasy. Have your dick slap in your chest. Have your dick take a tooth out on the way to the huddle. It doesn't matter. Just get to 28 and yank them out of the huddle and put, pin them to the ground, hold them down with one elbow, peel those. They wear these little lycra pants. They're so fucking gorgeous. And you just peel them off them. He's sweaty. They're just gonna slide off like a wet band-aid. Don't fuck with the jock strap. It's no obstacle to the asshole. You're wasting time. Plus, the little straps keep the ass cheek up and focused. Steam comes off his ass. Get your face in there. You huff that steam. You huff it like a gassy rag. Inhale his essence. And you peel those ass cheeks apart with your thumbnails like, like you're cracking a cage-free farm fresh egg and you take your dick don't stab him with it right away tease him with it here we go in and up asshole to tailbone people asshole to tailbone watch him struggle he knows it's gonna happen he doesn't know when uh, 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 oh asshole to tailbone pull on his face mask a bit twist his neck Pull on his dreadlocks. And these are not Occupy Wall Street dreadlocks, by the way. This is a black dude. This is straight up racism. This is a hate crime. Because, because you are pretty sure that your ex-wife used to fantasize about this guy doing similar shit to her. You knew it. Oh yeah, you wanna do that to my wife, you'll never get a thicker boner than that angry racist jealousy boner veins are coming out of the head and nothing makes you crazier than when you get that boner you're just jamming in them like a fat salamander and you ride you do that porn angle where you bend your dick down and do deep knee bends so you can look at the people you have 55,000 people are now out of their chairs on their feet chanting for you they love you they're like fuck that guy fuck that guy this is his home field and they're on your side all of a sudden fuck that dude yeah they're spilling beer you feel the rubber start to slide off of you but you don't give a shit this is my day they love me i'm gonna launch rainbows of coming to this broken motherfucker and you do you're not even done coming when you pull out your dick's just still fire hosing swaying back and forth getting rid of the last of the spurts and and you have a end zone celebration dance that you've worked out in the hallway mirror all season little old school icky shuffle thing and you spike the ball right next to his head he's blubbering like snot bubbles and crying he's not even making an attempt to get up his asshole is still dilated he's spasming his asshole is winking like a cyclops in a rainstorm. He's 
trying to regain its original shape. One milky tear is dripping down the tank. It's crying for you. And you float out of this perfect Sunday afternoon and this perfect daydream back into the stark reality of it's just you as some bloated post middle-aged dude with you got lumps of yellowed gummy cum in your gut hair and you look around you feel immediate remorse and shame i i let the rubber come off inside of that guy how irresponsible is that knowing what we know today to just bareback fuck a guy i don't know where that guy's been i know where he's going he's going into free agency he's fucking 32 now he's got shit knees he's lucky if he's warming a bench in jacksonville but i don't know where he's been to just bareback fuck the dude. i could have fantasy aids as we speak and i'm gonna do it again and as you're dealing with this, you want to escape, you look at the TV, pink shoes, I have to think about breast cancer on top of this problem? You're ruining the integrity of the game, breast cancer. This is what we do on Sundays to forget how much we hate ourselves. Stanhope, and that's why I drink.